Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode. The time my Entitled Mayel and FIL almost killed my child. Entitled mother yells at me because the little ice cream shop doesn't accept cash. Mother doesn't care if I get kicked out of my new house. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. The time my entitled Mayel and FIL almost killed my child. The title is a bit dramatic, but oh well. I just got inspired to write about my crazy Mayel and FIL and I hope this can be used as a cautionary tale in this crazy time of the VID. This was back in 2010. We had to live with my husband's family for a while. It was my SAL's house, but we lived with her, her daughter, Mel, FAL, and BIL. When my son was five months old, my niece got violently ill one night and kept throwing up. Obviously, I decided to keep the baby away from the family so he wouldn't get sick. They didn't like that. Especially MIL and FAL, who kept whining and complaining that I was keeping their precious grandson away. Even after explaining that I didn't want my niece to get him sick. I gave in because I was tired of hearing them complain literally all day on the condition that the niece stays in her room the whole time and they wash first. I am aware that this is where I messed up. I had to use the bathroom and was only gone for a few minutes. When I came back niece was on the couch holding my son. Snot dripping from her nose, throat scratchy, with FIL telling her, give your cousin a big kiss. Which she does, right on the lips. I freak out and snatch my baby and lock us in the bathroom so I can wash him. The whole time MIL and FIL were at the door telling me that I'm overreacting and that sharing germs builds immunity and other BS. Of course the next morning he has a high fever and he's really lethargic. I tell the in-laws that I want to take him to the hospital but Sayel was adamant that it wasn't that bad and that I should make an appointment with his pediatrician instead. I didn't have a license or a car so I had to rely on other people. Like an idiot, I listened to her because I thought she was on my side and knew more because her child is older. I made an appointment for that afternoon. I get there and the doctor took one look at him and told me to take him to the hospital, which was one block down, and said they would expect me. He was admitted as soon as we walked in the door. They told me I was lucky and that if I'd waited any longer my baby would not have lasted until the next day. His lungs were filling up with mucus and he couldn't breathe. He had to be hooked up to an oxygen tank and they had to vacuum suction the mucus out every hour. We spent a week in the hospital and he made a full recovery. Of course, the in-laws fully blamed me. MIL especially, but the others more or less agreed with her. She said my son got sick because I was dirty for having a child out of wedlock and a bad mother. My husband was pissed and told her off, but that woman has the worst case of selective hearing I've ever seen. I never fully trusted her ever again. Please tell us that you and you so made it a priority to get your own place after that. We did. It took a while though. Hope they didn't get to see your baby for a while. ID demand an apology for their words and actions and until they gave me it, ID not let them see the baby. If they think those horrid things about you, after all, they shouldn't want to see your dirty child. Unfortunately, I didn't have a choice at the time because we didn't have our own place and had to play nice. But when we left we moved to the other side of the state. Does anyone remember the post a few years ago where the couple had a baby who they discovered was deathly allergic to coconut, the father's mother came to stay with them, she was from a Southeast Asian country where they use coconut oil for everything. She was told repeatedly about the allergy and not to even bring any into the house. She did secretly, and when they left the baby in her care she used coconut oil in the baby's hair. The child died. The woman claimed she thought they were lying about the allergy. One thing I remember was the end. The guy cut his mother out of his life. When told by relatives it would be nice for you to see your poor old mother again, he said that he would rather see his daughter again. It's worse than my paraphrasing, but I couldn't find it. You do what is best for your child. 
My side of the family always think I'm overreacting when I refuse to bring my kids around if someone is sick at their house. I don't let their attitudes bother me. As we have all seen with COVID-19, some people did not have bad symptoms and some people died from the symptoms. Different people react differently to same virus, especially babies. Entitled mother yells at me because the little ice cream shop doesn't accept cash. I manage a 550-seater restaurant that has a little ice cream shop attached to it. Same owner, different system. The ice cream shop has had issues regarding cash-ups so the owner decided that no cash will be accepted, only cards. Anyway, it's a busy Sunday afternoon, we are at full capacity, the customers are nice and I'm enjoying my day. We have live music, the chef is, surprisingly, in a good mood and not yelling at the waiters. Something has to go wrong, right? I'm doing my rounds on the floor when I spot her, a short woman, red in the face, dragging a crying child and barreling towards me. Oh God, here it comes. EP, excuse me? Are you the manager here? Me, yes ma'am, is everything alright? EP, does everything look alright? She literally screamed this, and people are now looking our way. EP, you can look my daughter in the eye and apologize to her. Me completely perplexed, excuse me? EP, she wanted ice cream, and when I went to buy her some, that girl, pointing towards the cashier, said I cannot pay cash. Me, ma'am, unfortunately we do not accept cash at ice cream shop. We have signage up indicating this. EP, well it's bullshit. You can apologize to her for ruining her day. Me, ma'am, I am sorry about your daughter not being able to get ice cream, but if you only have cash, there is nothing I can do. EP, there is something you can do. You can let me pay for her. Do you not want to make a sale? Me, we cannot accept cash. EP, well f asterisk ck you then. She then grabs her crying shield and storms off. My general manager approached me and I couldn't help but burst out laughing. He asked what happened and I explained it to him. He laughs and says sounds like a customer we wouldn't want anyway. The entitlement of some people. Missed opportunity here to tell the girl about mommy not being able to read and that you are sorry she has to go through that. I hate this move towards a cashless society. Local governments in my area are making ordinances that businesses must accept cash and cannot operate as cashless. I like cash. It makes me more aware of how much I'm spending. One of the vet clinics I worked at was over-reliant on electronic transfer. The internet went down due to an accident in the local area. We couldn't put notes in the computers, tablets were required, make orders, or basically do anything that would require one computer talking to another. I have no idea how the front desk was handling checking out clients. We couldn't accept cash unless it was exact change and most people don't carry currency in the amounts veterinarian clinics charge. Some employees had hotspots on their phones that let them continue to work, but it was a real eye-opener on businesses not thinking ahead of contingencies. I can't stand when people act like this towards workers. You are doing your job. And she can't accept that fact. Mother doesn't care if I get kicked out of my new house. So, my mother and my youngest sister are moving to the UK in literally a few weeks. She sold my grandfather's house as it was no longer needed, but she didn't plan very well. She didn't plan a place to stay after the house was sold as she claimed she didn't expect the house to be sold so fast and so once the house was sold, she started staying with my oldest sister, without even asking, just expecting her to let her, which they did after a grovel. Originally she was gonna make me let her and my little sister stay, but as I live in a studio apartment, bedroom, kitchen and lounge in one room, I told her it was impossible. After an argument or two she said I must keep the cats then until she can figure out a temporary foster home. She procrastinates severely so she's being slow on that point. She hasn't even booked tickets yet. 
she has over a dozen cats and she is taking five with her to the UK. The rest were adopted out. However, these cats aren't trained very well, and being in a studio, it clutters the place. I told her I can take a few but not all. My house doesn't allow pets, so I told her at first I can't, but then she went on a rant about how she's helped me so many times and that it's things we do for family. I've already gotten an email from my real estate saying that they know I have cats here and that I need to be rid of them. Luckily, they're nice as I explain my situation that I'm just helping her out for a bit. I expected them to stay like two weeks, it's been almost two months. They have made the place smell terrible and keep scratching up my carpet stairs. They keep climbing up to the window edge and knocking things down and waking me up in the middle of the night. I've slept in because of lack of sleep and missed my uni classes so often. My partner doesn't mind cats but when they're jumping all over us in the middle of the night, it's hard to deal with it. And the smell too. No matter how many times I clean the litter trays, one of them keeps urinating on my clothes in the wardrobe, no matter how many times I close it and try to keep it closed. At the moment the cat shelters and such are packed full, but boarding kennels can take them. I've told my mom that I can't have them, and that boarding kennels are an option. But she claims that they need certain requirements, yet she hasn't even looked any up, and I have. I explained to her how they work and she still won't listen. Anytime I try to explain any of this, she gets defensive, calling me a selfish and that this is what family does for each other. My youngest sister calls me selfish for not helping, my oldest sister calls me the same. Tell both of your sisters that in that case they can have all the cats, since you are done with them and don't want to get kicked out of your apartment. If they complain, tell them the old adage of put your money where your mouth is or shut the hell up. You will need to figure out how to get rid of the cats on your own, since your mother is never going to get it together enough to do anything with them. Put your money where your mouth is or STFU. Take those cats to the shelter you cannot lose your apartment. I think she doesn't need to say anything to her sister. Just put all the cats in the carrier boxes and leave them in front of her door. You called me selfish for not wanting to house the cats so now you can show mom how selfless you are. By e. Tell your mom she has one week to figure out what to do with her cats. If she doesn't do anything pack them up and leave them on your sister's doorstep. Alternatively say you'll leave them at a shelter. It's her choice. You might also say your landlord has given you one week to get rid of the cats or you'll be evicted. It's kinda hard to argue that one. Good luck. Forget a week's notice, put them in a kennel or put them down. Tell your older sister that to house her if she cares so much otherwise to shut up. It sounds like mom is with the older sister. Her badly trained cats are with OP. I agree about telling older sister to either also take the cats or shut up. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.